Good evening, everybody. I'm Lisa Small, a curator of exhibitions here at the Brooklyn Museum, and it has been... That's the home, that's the home team. <laughs> Um, it has been my great pleasure to be the coordinating curator for our presentation of the fashion world of Jean-Paul Gaultier, From the Sidewalk to the Catwalk, which was organized by Thierry Maxime Lorio for the Montreal Museum of Fine Arts. Before starting tonight's exciting program, I just want to recognize and thank our exhibition sponsors, Lexis, which has generously funded the Brooklyn presentation, Beauté Prestige International, The Wall Street Journal, Piper Heitzig, The Standard Highline, and our media sponsor, W Magazine. I also want to take a moment, yes, let's have some applause for the sponsors. I also want to take a moment to let those of you who aren't yet members of the Brooklyn Museum know that tonight is an excellent night to join. Uh, in addition to all of the great benefits that you would receive year round, if you join tonight, you will be able to go upstairs and preview the Gautier exhibition directly after this program. And I know that there are people from our membership department um, outside the auditorium waiting to help you with that. Uh, so two more quick words of housekeeping. Uh, please take a moment now to silence your cell phones. Um, and know that uh, there will be an opportunity at the end for a couple of questions. Um, and so there are microphones um, set up at the sides for that. So, and now, you are all in for a great treat. Um, first, we are fortunate to have with us tonight the curator of this amazing exhibition. Please welcome Thierry Maxime Lorio. And I, I know it's a cliche to say, now is the moment we've all been waiting for, but truly, now is the moment we've all been waiting for. Uh, here to talk with Thierry and share a little bit about his life, his work, his inspirations, and this wonderful exhibition. Please join me in welcoming Jean-Paul Gaultier. Uh, as many of you have seen in the exhibition, when you enter, you have the Odyssey. It's really an exhibition about the passions and obsessions of uh, Jean-Paul Gaultier. And at some point in the exhibition, when you enter in the boudoir, I think it's one of the things that fascinated me most about uh, Mr. Gauthier is to see how, as a child, he was already, you know, ready to be a fashion designer. You, how, did you all see uh, Nana, the teddy bear? Yes. My monster. <laughs> so, Jean-Paul, can you tell us what kind of child you were? Like with Nana, how did the story start? But first of all, I was like, uh, come on, alone child. I mean, like, uh, no brother, no sister. So I was alone. My grandmother let me see, uh, let, let me do everything I wanted. So I wanted to have a doll, but my parents didn't want that. So it's why I have a teddy bear. But that teddy bear, I tried to transform it. It was the first transformer, let's say, that I did. So I did for my teddy bear experiment the cone bra which I did the first, before Madonna, I did long time before, you know. So it was the first that I experiment and like with the, the pointed, make with carton, with paper, you know, like newspaper, on here like that. You can see it, it's there. On that teddy bear, already I make the, uh, come on, the relation between fashion and uh, what's happening at the moment in the society. So I was looking at the TV, I was seeing, for example, it was the wedding of Fabiola of Belgique, of Belgium, with Baudouin. So my uh, teddy bear, I marry him, so I make uh, a wedding dress, etc. After it was the operation from Canada, uh, uh, Oui, le, uh, the, Professor Barnard, who did like the operation of open art. So like I have already put the cone bra to my teddy bear, I couldn't, I couldn't put it here, the operation. So I do it in the stomach, but I did the operation. So everything that was happening, I was doing, putting makeup, hairdo, everything. He was my cobaye. I don't know if you say that in English, but it's been like experimental uh, uh, little beautiful animals that I loved. And, uh, but uh, I put acupuncture to him because everything I was, uh, I was sewing, like doing with little uh, pins, you know. <laughs> So that was a part of what I was doing with him. But also I was looking at clouds. I was looking at uh, 
uh, clouds. So I was looking in the clouds, like to see faces, old faces, uh, angel, anything. You know, I could see. It's good because it lets you, when you are alone, you know, like not to be uh, bored. Uh, so you can imagine seeing. And I was looking also in the cupboard of my grandmother. And I should say that at school. It didn't go very well. But I was not very good uh, in anything, let's say. And the worst, it was in gymnastics and in football. Every time I was supposed to be in the one part of the football section, uh, there is something that say, oh, Gaultier, uh, disgust. Oh, but they didn't like at all me. So I was rejected. But one thing is that one day, you know, that is how it started, I think, in reality, wh what I am doing now, you know, is that I was at the age of nine, nine years old, and I saw at the TV, you know, a program which was about uh, comment, Folie Berger, and it was in live, they were showing the premiere of the Folie Berger with girl with fishnet, with uh, uh, feathers, you know, and sequins, etc. And I was fascinated, I find that beautiful, that uh, show, you know. So, I, the day after, you know, I sketch, I sketch, uh, come on, like the girl with the feathers, the fishnet, I try to make some effect of sequin, you know, and, uh, come on, and uh, 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 the teacher came, you know, the teacher, she went behind me and she made me stand up. And she told me stand up. She saw the sketch, you know, she didn't like and she wanted to punish me. She wanted to punish me and humiliate me, you know. So she made me stand out on the, like a little stage as we have in the French classroom, you know. And she put on my back, you know, with the pins, you know, uh, my, my sketch, you know, to humiliate me and to make me, uh, to go to all the different classrooms like that, I could be ashamed. But what happened, this was the contrary. <laughs> yes, it is, uh, but it's because, uh, I will tell you, it's because I, I was like, uh, you know, like kind of, uh, uh, I didn't know what to expect, but like I was rejected by all the other boys of, uh, uh, of the classroom, you know, uh, always because I was not good in football. There, for the first time, they, lo they smile and laugh, and after they ask me to make sketch for them. So it was my passport to be loved in some way, to be accepted. So uh, since that time, I think I realized, but it's years after that I realized it, that maybe through my drawing, through my sketch, I could go and uh, the doors should open, and the frontier should open. Mm -hmm. But I think also uh, your grandmother, your maternal grandmother, played a very important role in your uh, childhood. And, like you've seen that famous movie from Jacques Becker, uh, Falbala, which was really a starting point for you. Can you tell us a bit about this movie, how important it was for you, but also your grandmother? But first of all, my grandmother, she was quite a, a very special person, you know. She was like a nurse and she was having cli client, you know, like so she was doing to make injection, etc. But also she was like a woman very open-minded and she was she was treating her client like sometimes to make the injection, but after doing like beauty massage and doing also like faith healing, you know. And uh, giving advice also, oh, maybe if you want to, to keep your husband, maybe you have to change of clothes and that kind of thing, you know. <laughs> so, I mean, I was like seven years old, you know, and I was like listening to all that. So, so in some way, it showed me the connection that because of the clothes you are wearing, you know, uh, maybe your life can change, you know, the clothes, not only the clothes, but the hair also, how you put your hair, you cut your hair, and maybe it makes something new, and your husband is always like in love, even more than before, you know, all that kind of thing, you know. On me, I was like drawing, drawing like uh, the client of my grandmother, how she was, or I tried to make it, but it was awful anyway, the sketch, but, uh, and how she could be. So, like I saw at the TV, Marilyn Monroe, Brigitte Bardot, I was sketching the hair like Brigitte Bardot or like that. So it was like the new look, you know, the before and after. So I always loved that. And the client loved it, you know. And they were not frightened because I was like a seven years old uh, child, you know. So what can I do bad, you know, so it was not bad. So that was very interesting. And, 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 and another thing, my grandmother, she was very permissive. And uh, maybe she felt that I was like a little more fragile, that I was a little more like... Uh, 
What uh, can I say sensible? That, so she gave me, she tried to give me confidence in myself on the facts that whatever I will do, it will be all right, and uh, that uh, she loved me. Or, so that I think it's very important. I was very like uh, surrounded by that, uh, with my family that uh, support me and love me and had confidence in me. So even if I couldn't play with a doll, I could, uh, I could do other things, and even like a sketch. And at the moment, I wanted to make that profession, you know, because I saw the movie. Alors, so I come back to what you say about the movie, Falbala. It was a movie of the 40s. I was not born, but I saw it because they were showing old movies in the TV. So I was like, let's say, then I was a little older. I was 12 years old. And I saw that movie, that was a movie about like a story of a couturier, you know, uh, which was in love by as a muse, you know. In reality, the story was very bad because it starts that is suicide first. It starts very badly, so I was crying all the time. But <laughs> after you know why, it's because he has a friend of him, his best friend, that has a house of silk, you know, and he was doing fabric for couture, and. His uh, friend come to him to say, you know, I have a, a fiancé and I will marry her. Do you want to make the wedding dress? So he said, okay. And he saw the fiancé. But first he is not in love. He wants only to have sex. <laughs> so, but that, well, that I didn't realize exactly what was happening. But the thing is that he, he, he had what he wanted with the girl. Bon, so that's okay. But the problem, even if uh, it was a girl that was supposed to go with his best friend, but when he, like, little by little, he saw, he started to be in love with her, uh, but not completely, but like that, he has no inspiration for his collection, but since the moment he met her, he, uh, he gets inspiration. He draws, he draws, he draws, and after that will be the collection, like that, because he, is, he has his muse, you know. And... Uh, he makes a collection, but the thing is that he, he said to the girl that in reality, no, it was only like that, like, uh, and she has to marry with the, uh, the friend. So, uh, she is like furious because she is no more a virgin. That's the problem. So she says that she can't sell her wedding and she wants to go back to her place. But the thing is that at the end, the drama, so he come back, he became crazy because he realized that he's in love with his muse. And voila, and after, he, he crazy, he jumps through the window with the mannequin, which looked like her, you know, with a wedding dress. <laughs> it makes you laugh. Me, I cried, you know. <laughs> it's true. <laughs> and still, when I see it, I cry. So that's it. So that movie, I say, I want to do that job. I want to, to be like him. I want to do like him. Not with, not with suicide. <laughs> but I want to do the same thing. And I will have my muse. It was my school in reality. It was truly my school. So, uh, so I loved it. And I think that movie, truly, after when I work, you know, I worked first at Pierre Cardin. And after I work with Jean Patou, <laughs> at the house of Jean Patou, because Jean Patou was dead. But I went to the house and I find it was exactly, exactly, exactly like in the movie. So it was quite beautiful. The personnages were perfect. Why? Because the one that did the movie, the director, was very friend with one couturier of the time, of the 40s, with what uh, was Marcel Rochard. So the description, but you know, even if you know if you have a friend, your best friend, which is, uh, uh, comment, uh, which is couturier, you have to analyze and to see the thing, to retranslate very well how it's working. But me, after, when I was at Patou, I was feeling like, my God, it's Falbala. I am in Falbala. It's incredible. It's exactly that. The personnage, the premier d'atelier, my premier d'atelier is there, uh, Mireille, which is there. It was exactly, exactly like that, like the one to love her profession that is addicted to love, uh, addicted to her work, you know. So it was exactly the same atmosphere. So I loved it and it truly changed my... Uh, is, what I wanted to, to do, not to be famous, not to, be, uh, to have money, but to do that. Can you tell us, uh, it's a story that I love, is the story how you discovered corsets with the, your grandmother in the armory, you know, with uh, how you've been impressed by this and how it had a great influence in your work later. I should say that my grandmother influenced me for many ways, corset, but also one thing that I will explain to you, because I find the corset when she was not there. So, what, some morning, you know, she was going 
outside because she has to go to make injection, but outside. And what I loved, it was sometimes she was in a hurry and she was late, you know. So she was putting at that time like a big black combination and like, like that underwear, underdress, you know, underdress in black satin, very thick with lace at the, uh, in the low part, you know, on lace here. And she was putting after, uh, come on, the pullover, and she was putting her uh, coat, but she forgot to put the skirt. On me, I was seeing that she has no skirt, but like it was all black. She didn't realize that she was going out like that. On me, I like not to tell her that, but you know, but you know one thing that in reality, after I did collection like that, when you can see the underwear, you, can, you don't wear a skirt of a witch, you wear it as a real dress. So I'm sure she influenced me because of, uh, of that. You know, that was in my memory. And one of those days where she was out with her underwear only, uh, <laughs> I, 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 I look, I was profiting like to do something. You know? So I was opening the, the cupboard, I was seeing like, Paradise feather, which were very beautiful, you know, like in art, you know, things old, you know. And I was, uh, and I find one very strange object, which was, uh, come on, which was a corset. I learned after it was strange because it was salmon in satin, beautiful, very shining, you know, with strange shape and like lace up. So I said, what is that? I was very intriguish for me, you know, and I was thinking, what is that for? So when she came back, I tell her like, uh, that I look inside the armory, she didn't say anything, she didn't, was hungry, and I said, but I saw that, and what is this? So she explained me, it's something orthopedic, you know, like that you can have, and also like that you can have the waist very, very tight and very thin, you know, for the silhouette of the beginning of last century, you know. And she said, even that when she was younger, she was taking and drinking some vinegar because like that she has a contraction of the stomach, you know, like that. And at that time you have to lace it up very strongly. So you are like that and your, your waist is very thin. So it was phantasmagory, you know, when I saw that, you know. And so I loved it. And years after, years after, many years after, I, I, it was the moment, you know, where some girls in the palace, in the, during, uh, uh, just after the moment where there was a punk in Paris also, like end 70s, you know, the, some girls around me, particularly, uh, where, where, uh, like the queen of the punk, Edwige, and uh, uh, Frédéric Lorca, you know, they were wearing like uh, some bras that they find, you know, some bras that they find in the flea market, you know, and they were putting under the ch uh, their jacket, you know, and I was fin finding that very good, you know, it was that generation of girl who, after the woman's sleep of their mother, you know, that... Uh, take the bra and burn it, you know, like in a rebellion and like revolution, uh, like, uh, like against the submission of the woman, you know, uh, and liber uh, at the purpose of freedom, you know. So uh, after that, there was a post one that wanted to, uh, to show femininity, but like choosing to, uh, to be feminine. It was not because they were obliged to be feminine, it was because they wanted it. So me, I said, uh, uh, there is something about maybe bra, maybe corsetry, maybe I didn't know exactly what. So in my first collection, you know, uh, already I put like the tutu, the uh, motorcycle jacket, and on, on like a little bustier, but it was the beginning, the bustier. And after I came to New York, beginning 80s, truly in 80, 81, and I came to see one Broadway show, which was, uh, it was nine, I think, you know, from a Fellini movie, but it was done in a, in a, in a musical, you know. And I remember, and there was Lillian Montevecchi, which is an old, uh, uh, she, she, she had an affair with Marlon Brando. She was very proud. It's a French one. And she was so, so uh, proud like, to have an affair with Marlon Brando. And, uh, you know, and she was, but I, I can understand her. <laughs> and she, uh, come on, and she was, you know, uh, what was nice, it was like the set at one moment, it was only showgirl that were in the lodge, you know, like with uh, les ampoules and making the makeup on all the girls on stage were in satin, salmon satin corset. Oh, 
on me, it was the, the grandmother corset that was coming back. And I was, my God, my God, I will make my collection like that, you know. So I did a part of my collection like that, but I, did, uh, I didn't want to make exactly the same corset as the one of my grandmother. So I make exactly, uh, I mean, I make the same technique, same way, same color, but I did it in dress. A long dress, short dress, uh, jumpsuit, uh, skirt, uh, uh, trouser, but with always with all the corsetry type on uh, structure, you know. So it was like that that I first time I did like my corset dress. That after I gone on even even now, you know, to make like a kind of new version. So in fact, you think that uh, by bringing back corsetry in contemporary fashion, it's something that for you in a way empowers women to pr show their femininity and use their femininity as a tool of power, just like Madonna did or when Madonna discovered your corsets. You know, for her it was a, a tool to become more powerful. Would you think that corsetry is a I think that the corset, me, uh, what, especially about Madonna, but it was exactly in the same spirit I was in. It was a mix of uh, femininity and masculinity. The fact that you have, like, for example, like a men's suit, but fitted, so more feminine, and under it a corset was a mix of uh, masculinity, femininity, you know, which shows that the woman is seductive and want to use uh, uh, on, the seduction, feminine seduction, but also she is strong and it's her that decide to do it. So it was not al at all a submissive or orthopedic uh, object, you know. It was not even like a, uh, let's say, masochistic uh, object, you know. It, not a torture object uh, and not rectification exactly of the body. It was only like uh, um, unfazing the body and uh, subliming the body, let's say. So I think it's a question of also to accept, assume the femininity, but to, to use it as a power, you know. So it was more for the equality. It's why after to have put the, the corset for me was not going back forward in history. Uh, and I did it as a corset and as something you can, you can also show out, you know. It's not something from inside, it's something, it can be also something from outside. So it means like I assume my femininity, but I am a woman who assumes so I decide. And after I try to do the same thing with the men, not to put, I put some corset even, even Tanel, which is there, he, he had some corset, even, he has even that, you know, but, bon, anyway. So, uh, I, I did like for the male object, I did something from, uh, uh, to show also the masculinity and the femininity. I think it's one part like very, very important for me of, uh, because we have, every one of us has, men have a part of femininity and women a part of masculinity and uh, everybody appreciates the other part yeah. with that, with the two part. <laughs> the two part, sorry. It's not a One joke. thing that you may notice also in the exhibition is, uh, you know, you have pieces, like you have the very first dress that Jean-Paul uh, created in 1970 for one of his muse, uh, IT Zanson, you know, in The Virgins, the one with the bare breasts, but you see clothes from the 1970s, 80s, 90s, and one thing that I find fascinating in his work is that since uh, Mr. Gauthier initiates the trends instead of following them, uh, most of the pieces are timeless. Unless you read the labels, you cannot say, oh, this is very 70s, very 80s. So, <laughs> to, sorry, to come back to the 1970s, you worked with Pierre Cardin, with Jean Patou, uh, and then you went to the Philippines to work for Pierre Cardin, and at one point you decided uh, with Francis to start your own company and do your first fashion show in 1976. Mm -hmm. Can you tell us, uh, when you were in your early 20s, how did you decide that and how was uh, your first fashion show? I should say that, bon, like I told you, at the moment I saw Falbala, I knew that I wanted to do that profession. But for me, to be honest, it was not like uh, thinking, oh, I will have uh, come on, a big house and I will uh, uh, give order to people. No, it was doing dress, doing clothes and uh, designing, sketching, finding nice fabric and doing that uh, job, you know. It was not like also like uh, to be famous, to be rich or whatever. It was truly like uh, to do that, you know, like a little, I should say, like, uh, like uh, the boy I was, the little boy I was dreaming uh, uh, of a game, you know, and to play his game. Uh, 
And I'm lucky I played that game all my life, you know. So I, I wish for everyone to have that, you know, like your dream and like that to go on to do it during all your life. Seriously, but to do it, you know, because it's quite beautiful that. So I went to different experience. But uh, for me, you know, so I have a boyfriend, Francis Menuge, that was with me. And I should say that maybe it's him that make me... Uh, realize and say that uh, we should jump together because I was feeling stronger, not alone, you know, because alone maybe what I should have done, I should have worked for like an artistic director because at that time it was uh, that, you know, to the house of couture, but they were all the, the, all the place in the couture, maison de couture were taken, you know, uh, so I have no choice. So, uh, uh, what to do to play for ready to wear, but I was more in, inclined to something more creative than uh, at that time. There was only Kenzo that was super creative and Sonia Riquel uh, that was super creative, but they were, the creator were at the head of the house. So the only way it was like to do, you know, like when, uh, for example, when some do a singer or musician, you know, they, there is no place like in a record company, they do themselves their own concert and uh, after it's, uh, one uh, record company uh, sees them, uh, now internet, you know, uh, they, 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 they can maybe be uh, after to have a career and to make their own record. So uh, without money, we decide like to, to, to make together. Uh, he give me the nerves, the energy and the vitamin like to, to do it, you know. So we jump with no money. And what is good is that you start with no money. Uh, is that the fact that uh, when you succeed to do it with no money, after you feel like uh, not vulnerable, you know what I mean? It means like, uh, you know that what can happen, you know, uh, you can find solution and you, you have to have idea and you have to be creative. When you have not, uh, you know, sometimes when you have too much comfort, I don't say that you have like to be like, uh, uh, <laughs> like that and you know, like uh, no money at all, but I mean like, uh, the fact to be too much comfortable is not good for creation. And if you want to create, uh, sometimes that you have to find solution. Instead, to, to, to try to do and to be like the, the ground house and uh, that we were doing big show in big place, etc. Why to try to do it if you have not the money to do it? You have to find another solution, other presentation, other model, other thing. So it's that that make me see that after all there is not only that way to do but to find new way yeah. because in the exhibition in the urban journal section you see the maybe you've seen that there is a dress that is created in fact with placemats that Mr. Gucci brought back from the Philippines uh, he was already very inventive to uh, you know to recycle things you've seen probably the garbage bag, bag dress uh, with the tin can uh, bracelets and all that can you tell us a bit about how you created your first fashion show and how it went in uh, 1976? A catastrophe it went, but uh, it, uh, <laughs> a real catastrophe. But anyway, I didn't know anything. The first thing that I did, big mistake, is that I, uh, I choose, if I choose, uh, we choose uh, the, the moment of the show. It was just exactly the same hour of the best designer in Paris of the time, the one that all the journalists wanted to see. So, uh, I mean, I had all the ones that were refused in, uh, in that show. <laughs> bon. Which means it was better in reality <laughs> because what I show was, uh, let's say, a part, like maybe one of the uh, outfits of the two outfits that are here are the best one. But the rest was whatever, you know. I didn't have uh, money, so I, I, I tried to find like even like a, a lining to make dress with lining fabric and things like that, you know. But it was done very in a short time, and it was not very much thought about. So uh, when the show start, I didn't even know. Alors, first the model. I was lucky because I have one friend of mine uh, that was a model, and she was she was very beautiful. I met her at Patou. And I told her to go to Saint Laurent because I was sure that if Saint Laurent should love her. She did Saint Laurent, she become one big model of Saint Laurent. And so, like she was in Saint Laurent, on me I was starting my show, she said to all the girls of Saint Laurent to come to, uh, to my show, to make my show. So they make it for free, and I pay them with the clothes. Unlucky they were, because the clothes were not very great. <laughs> 
But anyway, thank you to them. I must thank them because truly it's that, you know. But I jump, you know, it was my first collection. So after that, when you are in the water, you have to swim. So I did another one. It was normal to do another one, even with no money. I did like that, like four, without at all money, you know. And uh, after one moment, I was arriving to a point of, my God, uh, now I have to reimburse because I have not even, so I was going uh, uh, to my, my parents' house sometimes to eat, and my boyfriend too, he was going to his parents, and, uh, and, uh, and voila, you know, and we did, and, and, and luckily, there is one journalist that uh, Melka Trianton, a woman that was a great, that was ex model of Schiaparelli <coughs> and etc., and she was uh, editress at the L magazine, and she heard that there was one company, one boutique in Paris, bus stop, that was looking for a designer to make the, their collection. So she presented me, and the woman, Dominique Schuller, which was the directrice of the boutique, she saw my sketches, she saw some photos of the collection I did before for collection, and she even cancelled the person she already uh, booked for uh, do the collection. Uh, and, uh, and I start to make my, my collection through, uh, through them, because uh, she believed in me, and voila. So I was lucky, I must say. Thank you to Dominique. So I could go on and make a collection that became commercial and uh, could be sold, because the other one before not sold at all. You know, I will tell you something, is why did I do the, the defilé? Because, like, I didn't go to a, a school, you know, to fashion school. For me, I, what I saw in the movie, it was the defilé. So the clothes in the boutique, okay. But for me, what I love, it was like the, the model walking on somebody inside that is inspiring. It was all that, so I didn't know that there was other way to do it. For me, it was the work was that, you know, so to make a fashion show. So it's why that I present through fashion shows that I didn't sell the clothes, and I went on like that, and after that, start to sell the clothes, and people start to wear them. Thank you. Also, uh, Mr. Gauthier is known for uh, the very generous social message in his work. You know, there is no taboos, there is no boundaries. Everybody is welcome in his world and everybody can relate to it. And you see it in the exhibition, that even in the muses section or in every galleries of the exhibition, that whatever your age, your skin color, your body shape, your gender, your religion, everybody is welcome. Can you tell us how, what is your idea, ideal of beauty, how do you approach, uh, you know, you use so many different models through the years, you know, from Tanel to Farida to Beddito, uh, you've had so many different muses, can you tell us what, how do you define beauty? To be honest, I, I think it started, of course, when I was a child, you know, always I was attracted by people that were different. So I remember that I was at school, and at that time there was one girl, uh, I was in a school where it was like boys and girls, after, uh, when I was like, let's say, 14, uh, 14 years old. Uh, and uh, what, that girl was very white skin, you know, and with very, very Afro hair, but red, truly red, but not dyed a, a real red carrot, uh, you know. And I was fascinated by her, you know, and uh, because she was completely different from the other one. So always I have been attracted and find beautiful people that were different. So later on, you know, when I started to work, I, uh, after one of my first friend on, on the uh, model, you know, was a black girl that was from uh, Ma, uh, Guadeloupe, you know, from Caribbean, French Caribbean, and she was very beautiful, it is, and she, with her skin, and the color of her skin was going very, very beautifully with all the color I could mix, you know, and uh, I like her because she was different, her way of moving was different. After there was Anna, one, uh, that girl that was like incredible, that was, first time I saw her, she was with the hair like Reese Brooks, like with the makeup, like red around the eyes, red, and the lips black. And she was with like a 40s dress, you know, that was in 72, 71, 72, and a, a 40s dress, but with no shoes. And she was with a big like straw bag, you know, like that, walking like that. I see, I was, I say, my God, she's fabulous, and I love her, you know. <laughs> and and she was, and she was, and after even the way she was not model, but she, her boyfriend wanted her to be model, so uh, 
she said, okay, maybe why not? It will give me some money. And I remember, <laughs> and, uh, 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 she, I remember that when she was moving, you know, she was her, way, her own way to move. I mean, like she, uh, all the position she was putting her, her arm on the, uh, it was beautiful. So first, uh, I said, wow, she's great and she's completely different. After that, there was Farida, Farida Kelfa, which was truly like she was, uh, she was from one part of France, you know, Lyon. Uh, but in a part that is uh, uh, where, like, uh, immigrant, like Arabic, Algerian, you know, uh, and she was super beautiful. She was. She left for Paris at the age of 16, and uh, uh, I met her there, you know, and I was like, ah, on the shock, you know. She was with her black, black, black hair, you know, like with a like a banana, you know, like a rockabilly hairdo like that, big, uh, come on, like a golden creole, you know, like the uh, ring, big rings there, you know, the nose that was incredible, like truly like, like that, you know, like a flesh, like a incredible, and the attitude, the lips, you know, were like a little, like, méprisant, you know, like, uh, oh, uh, you know, like, <laughs> she was disgusted or whatever, you know, she was super impressing and dressing very, very well, you know, and she was uh, like that on me, I was thinking, she's not a model, but she is like so impressive, so if I like her and I am impressed, people that will see her will be impressed and she will be beautiful in my clothes. So I asked her to do it, but I was frightened. <laughs> she was the time like, what do you want like that? You know, like she was a little arrogant, you know, but I loved it. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> and, you know, and when she did the show, I remember first time, you know, she was like having a swing gum and she was like, mm -hmm, machine the swing gum and uh, like uh, walking like uh, truly like st straight like that. I loved it. It was a contrary of the real model that were, bon, I, some of them, I love them, you know, but it was a moment, you know, of the Swedish uh, girl, which were all blonde and beautiful, but all walking in the same way, you know, like very professional, which I didn't like so much, to be honest. I prefer the attitude of some that were in, uh, some of a very few that have the attitude of uh, uh, Farida was unique, you know, but her way of moving, I prefer that, or Anna, for example, we are just her own way, and, and like make new the way of walking the model, you know, so all those girls, uh, for me, it was fabulous, it was super inspiring, it was my muse, like in the movie, you know, and after I have even a male muse, which was Tanel, which is just there, and <laughs> it's him, <laughs> and he, him, he was like very, like, I remember he was working like, uh, uh, he was like assistant of uh, editor uh, uh, Elizabeth Jean, which is doing the magazine Numero now, you know, a very good uh, magazine. I don't know if you know it, but buy and go and buy it because it's a beautiful, uh, beautiful, it's called Number, Numero. It's very, very good. And at that time, it was Gilles she was doing, and she had an assistant, Tanel. And Tanel came in the house like, to, to take some clothes, like for, to make photos. And I said, who is he? And they tell me Stanel, the assistant of Babette. And I saw him and I asked him also, like, he was literally like very different, not at all like the stereotype of the model, archetype of model. Com completely the opposite, but very beautiful and very attitude and very modern. For me, it was perfect. So Tanel became my muse and he has his own way of walking and very, going very well with the male object I wanted to show. <laughs> so the male object was, uh, very well uh, represented. <laughs> and he's still walking with me because I am quite, f uh, because he's fabulous only. <laughs> Is that it? <laughs> so, so it's true that it's like in the movie, all those persons, all those uh, uh, models, uh, which were not models at the beginning, in, uh, come on, inspire me and give me like energy. And it's true that sometimes I cannot work um, on someone that are very good model, but I don't know why I cannot work uh, on them, you know, on some, uh, because of the attitude. It's not only like kind of to be beautiful, perfectly, uh, classically beautiful. It's also to have attitude, a way of uh, putting, uh, I don't know, the hand in the pocket or not, or walking or being there, like looking in the mirror, how you look like, you know, like a, a kind of energy and emulation. Comment dit-on ça Emulsion, non. Emulsion, c'est... It's cooking. So, je sais... I don't even know the name in French. Anyway. Uh, <laughs> excitation, let's say. Excitation. Uh, with uh, working with them. 
But also, uh, you know, in terms of body shapes, you've, you've, you've used very different models like Beddito or even uh, Velvet d'Amour. But I think that there is no only one kind of beauty. That is my first thing that I, uh, it's the base of everything. You know, I think you can uh, find beauty in every, everyone and in anything also. It depends on the angle you are looking for, you know. It's sure that, uh, come on, uh, uh, attracted by different people, but I saw that also. I remember when I was going to London, you know, in the 70s, there was like some very round girl, very like uh, curvy, let's say, that were dressing and like ma having makeup in a very, uh, come on, uh, uh, sometimes like provocative way and having also like haircuts that was like quite incredible, you know, and, and uh, uh, wearing instead to hide them, they have like uh, some dress that were super sexy and they were fabulous you know, they were not ashamed of what they were. I think that is very important also, the attitude, how you feel in yourself. If you like yourself, people will love you, I suppose. So, I love them. <laughs> <laughs> I say that because maybe I didn't like him my, myself very much physically, so it's why maybe I see that in the other and I love them very much. But I must say that uh, uh, after that, I, so there is also the ages. There is some people that are very beautiful, getting older. And uh, I think that is not good me. I have the example of my grandmother, which was very beautiful, very clever, because her beauty were coming, was coming also from inside, you know. And I think it's very important like, to, to, to still see, not the age, but the beauty that come out from your face, from your attitude, from uh, what you say, how you walk, how you are, you know. So it's all that that I try to look, and not to think about criteria of uh, what now it's uh, in fashion, what is not, and uh, more like uh, what humanly it, it is, you know. But that you have not only to look to the internet, you have to look also on real people. Don't miss that, because in real, in real you see a little differently. Also in the exhibition, you may have noticed that we have fantastic wigs and headpieces uh, created by uh, Odile Gilbert, a great uh, hair sculptor who's just here in the Which first row. Can, can you? <laughs> you always say that uh, for you, the silhouette is the most important thing. It's not about the accessory. Can you explain us why, you know, hair is very important for you in your shows? You always have these fantastic sculptures of hair and how the silhouette is important for you? I should say that in some things that I shouldn't say that I envy uh, come on, the hairdresser, but in some things I must have something frustrated of uh, hairdresser in myself, you know, because I think the hair are very important, very, very important, because it can change you. It can make you a lifting, sometimes uh, uh, very quick lifting, you know, only by the shape. Uh, Look at me when I have long hair, completely different than when it's here, it's shaved on like that, you know. So it can give you an help, you know, like in a, directly physically. Look at the, uh, come on, um, uh, come on, and, um, come on, the relation that you have with your hairdresser. Uh, it's a uh, relation. I don't speak about sexual relation. I speak about like a aesthetic relation and like the manipulation. The uh, hairdressers, they touch you. They make you sometimes massage. They change the color of your hair. It's something they do directly on your, uh, on your physique, you know. Uh, the couture, we don't pins like I did to my... Uh, you don't put pins uh, on the body like I did on my teddy bear, you know. Uh, when you do uh, outfit, there is an outfit that you put over you. But we don't touch directly, directly the body, you know. So we have not... There, there is something of big intimacy. So it proves at which point it is something that belongs to you, you know. So I, I, I think that the air cut on the air style are very important, and I love it. I must say that by air, by changing color of air, by, by me, truly, I, I have a rebirth when I change the color of my air when I was platinum. It's a new career that started, you know. No, but I mean, it looks like a joke, but not. I truly appreciate very much 
uh, the hairdressers, the creativity that uh, there is. And I was speaking with Odile about like uh, what how incredible it is like to see the festival of the hairdresser and where they show a demonstration of how they do the hair and what they can do with the hair. You know, it's fabulous. You know, so it's very important because it's part of the person. You know, and something strange is as. I don't, uh, the makeup, it's very important, but I like it that it doesn't hide the personality, you know. Uh, I like that the makeup, so I am not so much into like a strong makeup, and uh, I prefer like that looks truly natural. Bon. But the hair, it can be because you can see, but which one even if some people, because there is some that are very lucky, they can change all, all, all the hairstyle, you know, but, uh, and they are always beautiful. But there are some people that are better with that kind of haircut and uh, all that other one, you know. So I think you can change your life with a new haircut, you know, and a new hairstyle. It's true. Uh, you can get married, you can get, it's, it's very good, you know, it's like, so uh, I, I love the haircut and I have a lot of admiration about the work of Odile, like truly, we are doing like truly like uh, a frightening of nothing, I think, no? What do you think, Odile? Huh? <laughs> and truly, she does it perfectly with her art and, uh, uh, and with her talent. Like, she is truly like great and uh, uh, not afraid to experiment a lot of things. So we'll take uh, questions from the public. Mrs. You have a good voice. You, you have a good up. voice. We can, uh, okay. You um, have tattoo. <laughs> voilà, a nice one. Okay. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Uh, but what I, well, what I can say, if I understood well, the question is uh, oh, <laughs> collaborate, yes, collaboration. Yeah, uh, no, no, it's my English, which is uh, also sometimes a little. Uh, uh, so no, I, I think that first of all, what I have to say is that. Uh, Odile was having her career before me. Uh, no, no, I don't mean that she is older than me, not at all. But I mean like uh, she was already Odile and doing things alone, you know. I think that uh, in terms of career, if it is what you are speaking ab uh, uh, about, I think you have not to think about uh, first collaboration or whatever. You have to think first about like uh, what you want to do yourself and what you you think you you you, you uh, your creation and to do your creation and to 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 do everything ab about that. And after maybe arrive a collaboration uh, that are f uh, fabulous and uh, you will find uh, uh, some person which one uh, uh, will make you 
do for his show uh, something and you will go very well with him. But I think it's better like uh, first you think about yourself, what you want to do yourself, your creativity yourself, and uh, after you see, because there is collaborations that happen that are marvelous, but it's like, you know, like uh, sometimes you have a new friend, you have uh, like that, you can also be alone, you know <laughs> what I mean? So uh, there is no, it's a fact, but she is uh, like uh, by herself, she's already, uh, come on, uh, she's already a, a deal. I mean, like it's not because that we are, uh, that she's doing, she does a lot of other things, you know, and other designers that are talented. And she does also things for magazine for herself, you know. So that's why. Think about yourself. Don't think at least that only a collaboration can be, uh, can be good. It can happen. It's the case. And I am lucky. But uh, also it can be uh, without collaboration. Thank and you. be yourself. <laughs> Thank you. So, short questions, please. <laughs> In the back, uh, redhead. Yes. Bonsoir. Je vous vois Sorry, plus. can you please use the microphone so the rest of the audience can hear? I'll pass it down. Thanks. Microphone. <laughs> Bonsoir. Uh, two really quick questions is, uh, does music influence uh, your designs and who are your favorite designers, past and present? Merci. Alors, do, uh, I, I heard music before, no? Est-ce que la musique vous influence, puis qui sont vos couturiers, passé ou présent? Ah, alors, music, of course, influence me uh, a lot. I should say that uh, now maybe not, but uh, before I was always like, a, no, what I am, <laughs> no. I, I, uh, um, sorry, it's me, because sometimes I am saying what I am thinking exactly, so it doesn't mean anything because I know what I mean. Uh, uh, so, I explain. Music is very important, that is my spontaneity, so sometimes it looks strange what I am saying. Uh, of course, music influences me. For example, when I am alone sketching, I need music. I need to have uh, uh, music around me because it gives me like energy on sketch, uh, can come more easily because it's like inhibition, you know, with the music. Uh, rock star influenced me a lot. I mean, like uh, David Bowie, uh, uh, Boy George after, and a lot uh, influenced me. Rock and roll scene influenced me, of course. Uh, so all that influenced me. To say what? Even in my creation, I did, uh, under the work I did, of course, with Madonna, uh, it was a self uh, come on, reciprocity in, uh, in uh, creation, so it was fabulous and my, one of my most beautiful collaborations I ever had. Uh, so all that on them, the rock star by themselves, even like the men like uh, uh, Mick Jagger, you know, and some uh, rock stars that make, put makeup, you know, men that were a little like androgynous and like that, influenced me in my creation. So that is the answer. So yes, music is very important for me and uh, always influenced me. It's why when I started my first collection, since the beginning, I put music, you know, and I was lucky also because when I worked at Cardin, already he was putting music on making a show. But always I wanted to make like a show, you know, like, uh, it's why even last time I did like, truly like a, like a dancing with the star casting, you know, where the girl we could dance and Coco Rocha danced marvelously, Carly Kloss also, so it was quite fab. So I always love music. Apart that, what is the designer that I love? Uh, alors, from the past, I love Saint Laurent a lot, you know, and from now also I love Edith Sliman very much. I think it's very good what he did about Saint Laurent, in my opinion, but it's only me that I see, uh, not only me, but I, uh, it's my own advice, uh, advice um, think that uh, truly he did like renew very well uh, like the house of Saint Laurent. And he is truly like what could have if Saint Laurent done today. Uh, I love uh, Reka Wakubo a lot. I think she is quite marvelous and uh, uh, arty and uh, incredible. I love Martin Margiela, which worked for, with me uh, four years, and uh, I love him as a person and as what he did. Uh, his work is absolutely fabulous, and his career is absolutely ex exceptional by the fact, like, to arrive, to be, to make, uh, to make, uh, 
a clause and to make a, a label famous like it does, you know, without, without uh, be presented, be present as a person, you know, is unique and like uh, absolutely, uh, yes, unique. So I love his unique way and uh, his uh, humanity and personality on his work, most of all. What else? But there is some other ones that are good, but for the moment, oh, uh, uh, I don't see. Is the, uh, Baba, comment? Oh, yes, Mugler also, of course. I respect very much his work. He has like a, uh, truly like a, uh, like personality and aesthetic, which is very precise. And he has style. To be honest, the one that I appreciate is the one that, in some way, don't do fashion. When I say don't do fashion, I mean like the ones that don't follow the trend and make their own inspiration. It's the one, uh, is what, uh, I think that is the way the most, uh, not easy because it's like, it's dangerous way, but it's the most exciting way, you know. So Mugler goes until his, uh, his fantasy uh, and is absolutely incredible. I love John Galliano, I must say. I think you like truly, uh, yeah. I say that because, you know, in some way I think like he didn't do at all what he did uh, Mugler, but he is like also going into uh, his uh, uh, fantasy and his uh, extraordinary tailoring and he has a lot of talent on the romance, uh, which is fabulous. I loved also uh, Alexander McQueen. Does anybody up there has a question? Because... Wait, he said up there. I was wondering if you ever get blocked when you're designing, and when you do, what, where do you look for inspiration when you can't come up with something immediately? I didn't get... Uh, so can you repeat, you. please? Um, if, you ever, if you ever find yourself uninspired or blocked, where do you look to get inspiration or to get your, your mind going and your imagination going? Oh, it can be anything, the inspiration, you know, it can be like uh, sometimes some like uh, very, uh, uh, come on, like reject of things that I have done, can be, uh, can be, uh, come on, a movie, can be, uh, come on, a book, can be somebody in the street which dress in a way which is not fashion, but which is at the contrary. Uh, generally, I am not so much, uh, come on, uh, uh, inspired by people that are in fashion, because what is in fashion is already there. So I am more attracted by uh, something different, you know, something that is not in, in fashion. Maybe to make it again or to make it in a new way is that, you know. But it can be anything. It can be colors, it can be uh, the bricks uh, of Manhattan, the colors that there is on the walls that are beautiful, like sometimes with the black, black on the gray, on the color of the rest of the brick. It can be a combination of color, it can be light, it can be a show, like I say, like Broadway show with all the corset, you know, it can be, uh, it can be, it has been also in, in, in Manhattan, one time I was, I was going out of uh, uh, walking and I saw uh, coming out of the big library, you know, like uh, a lot of rabbin, you know, a lot of rabbin dressed in, uh, in their costume, you know. And I said, my God, the force, the strongness, and the beauty of their costume, and all them together uh, like that, you know. For me, it was something like incredible and very beautiful. So I said, oh, I want to make a collection like that, you know, like for the beauty of their culture, you know, which is different. So I was remembering one movie from the 70s, which was called Pain Chocolat, which was an Italian movie, very beautiful, which was the story of uh, man, which was Italian, uh, yes, which was Italian, and he was going to immigrate in Switzerland, and he was not integrated, you know. So what he did, many things, but also he dyed his hair in blonde, like to make people think that he was uh, from Switzerland, you know, like that he should feel more integrated. And uh, that act, you know, so he was blonde, and one, people thought he was uh, he, that he was a sweet, you know. And one time he was in a bar and it was like a game, football game, a football game always, you know, that, uh, where it was Italy against Switzerland. And one moment, of course, it is Italy that win. And he say, way, 
like that, you know, he was so happy, you know, so happy that uh, Italy win. And everybody turned at him, he is Italian, you know. <laughs> so I think like it was like very emotional because truly really, it's beautiful, you know. He tried to change, but whatever you do, you are what you are, you know, and it's beautiful what you are. So don't be ashamed to be what you are and be what you want to, uh, you, what you want to be or what you are. Uh, over here. Hello. Yes. We actually have a question here on the far to your right. Um, Bonsoir, Monsieur. Yes. How are you doing? Hello. I have a question. When you started out in around 1976 doing your collection, yeah. you, a designer only had to do fall and spring summer <laughs> collection resort. Mm -hmm. Now, in the year two, 2013, if you start out as a designer right now, you would have to not only do fall, spring, summer, you also have pre-fall, you have resort, you have to do special exclusives. Mm. And it's a big drain on creativity, and I think a lot of designers suffer from maintaining that creativity. What would be your advice if you were starting out right now? How would you protect and maintain your creativity in this such a faster-paced design world? I should say that uh, we are in a moment, of course, like everybody knows, like of a cries, like a world cries, you know. And uh, I think that the cries, maybe it's also because the fact as there is many, 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 many uh, houses, many, many, many labels, many, 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 many clothes, and there is less people to wear, more, more clothes than people to wear it, you know. So I think that's, that's a problem. So what I mean by that is that uh, I don't know if it is a good solution to present collections so big. Uh, fashion doesn't change every season. It's, not, it's uh, absolutely wrong. <laughs> that doesn't exist, you know. You cannot change the, the silhouette of people like all the, uh, every six months. Uh, so I think that uh, me, I think it's better to concentrate and to be yourself. For me, there is no issue than uh, uh, come on, uh, to show what are doing the other. I think copying is not a good solution. The best thing is to propose something that is from you, in which you have confidence, in which you believe, and if you believe it, you make the other people believe it. Thank you. We will take uh, one last question. Mrs. here, just in front, please. Hi. Hello. But I think it's uh, it's terrible because you know it's like uh, uh, it's terrible, yes. Because I think uh, the differences are so beautiful, and there is so beautiful beauty in Africa, black beauty, yellow beauty. There is different beauties that uh, have to be there, and we have to use as a model. Uh, the thing is, like it was already. I think before the seven, uh, before the sixties, you know, it, it, there was no one uh, girl. After some came and became like uh, known, you know, and make some cover. But I must say that only few magazines show uh, uh, black girls, uh, and uh, it's terrible because I, uh, you know, it's like sometimes fashion can be uh, is that you know, like some, like it was like some years ago, the fashion of all the Russian girl, I have nothing against the Russian girl. There are some super beautiful, it's true. But not all are, uh, and there is other also to, uh, to see. Me, I am very, uh, come on, uh, I, I do all my casting. I don't want to speak about me, 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 what I do, because it's true that I love the di different, uh, and I always take different type, very, uh, come on, very specific, uh, very specific, very different one from another one. So, of course, I love black 
girls and boys, and I love also the contrary of them, the uh, one platinum one, the red hair one, the yellow skin one. You know, it's, uh, at the moment they are uh, special and beautiful, I want to use them. But, alas, I, I, I cannot take like uh, 100, uh, what, how many there is, like maybe 1,000 uh, beautiful black girls that there is because I have not, I, I don't need so much model, you know. The problem is that I think, but there is, I think there is some uh, uh, young designers that take some girl, but maybe uh, the magazine has not to be fright, uh, frightened. I don't know if it is even frightened. I don't know exactly why they, they, they don't uh, support. Uh, uh, it was, when it was a Russian, it was, oh, okay, another, another new because, you know, it's uh, one girl is going very well. For example, let's say Ketmos. After they were looking at the new Ketmos, not seeing that there is maybe some of the beauties and Ketmos. Ketmos is Ketmos and, ba uh, and Basta. Why to try to have a new one? You know, exactly the same. So it's a little all that, you know. Naomi is fantastic and beautiful. And Iman, of course, was beautiful. But there is a lot. Now there is jo Joanne Small, which is like absolutely fantastic and great. But she's not totally black, and she is mixed. But I think, uh, voila, with uh, uh, come on, black girls, it's true that we can like uh, the clothes, are, the color are fantastically beautiful. You can mix all the colors that you you can. Uh, the body generally are absolutely fantastic, and they have a way and elegance of moving, which is truly graceful and truly really, uh, inspiring. What can I say? It's true that it's good that to protest uh, against that because it's truly a shame. It's the same thing for with the boys, you know, <laughs> with the uh, black boys. And uh, I am for, you know, you should make the universal color of uh, Benetton, you know, uh, again. <laughs> but it was like, uh, truly, it's like uh, something to do, you know, like, uh, voila, what can I say? And all my love and admiration for, from all the girls and beautiful like you. Thank you very much, Jean-Paul. Thank you very much. <laughs>